from around the globe. In sold out arenas and humble churches. From out on the streets. To your screen. And now, the time and what must be done. On this edition of Farrakhan Speaks. In the name of Allah the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah the Lord of all the worlds, the Beneficent, the Merciful. We thank Allah for his many blessings. We thank him for his many gifts. We thank him for his goodness and his mercy. We thank him for his prophets and messengers, from Abraham to Moses to Jesus to Muhammad, peace be upon these worthy servants. I thank Allah for his merciful intervention in the affairs of the black man and woman of America, in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, for his raising up from among us his messenger Messiah, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and from the honorable Elijah Muhammad he has given to us today a divine leader, teacher, guide, and warner to the nations, that man that is in our midst, the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I greet all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Now, I said earlier that my sister and I are have been touched, as well as others, by what Allah permitted to happen last Sunday. Because it is clear that no man can want for his people more than what the people desire and want for themselves. Leaders are born to fulfill the desire that's in the hearts and breasts of the people for change, for freedom, for justice. God brings forth a leader out of the longing and the yearning of the people. God brings forth and produces a leader out of the dissatisfaction of the people. And a leader is born from the people to produce the desired change. The leader that God brings forth becomes the voice of the people. He directs and guides the cause. But if the people are unwilling to take the necessary steps to produce the change they desire, then they will perish under a negative and unfavorable condition. Allah does not change the condition of a people until the people change their own condition. The people at some point have to mature. They have to grow into the principle of freedom, the principle of justice, and the idea of nationhood. So much so that it becomes a part of their very being. And when that is accomplished, then change is realized. And guess what? A nation comes into existence. Again, no man can want for his people more than what the people want for themselves. No matter how much a father wants good for his son, no matter how much 
a father or a mother wants one of their children to grow up to be a lawyer or a doctor or an athlete, some career or profession, if the child does not want that for himself, then the parents remain with the dream. And it is unrealized in the child. When it comes to the freedom of a people, the people have to want to be free in order for them to realize the light of their own freedom. History has shown that no people who fought, who sacrificed and died for freedom were denied. I'm going to say that again. No people that desired to be free were denied. Once they were willing to pay the price for their freedom, no matter how strong and vehement the opposition was, they were always able to realize the freedom that they desired if they were willing to pay the price Christ and sacrifice their lives for freedom. No people in the history who desired for themselves to be separate and independent were kept from realizing that independence, though a heavy price, had to be paid. So I believe that Allah permitted the circumstances of a bacterial infection to the minister to produce the event on Sunday to cause us to grow and mature in the invincible word and teaching that Almighty God Allah has given to us through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan with a proven economic blueprint to end poverty and want, create jobs and secure land that will give us the basic necessities of life and make us builders instead of beggars. Allah wants to grow us into a nation. He wants us to have confidence in Him and in Him alone. The Quran tells us, And when my servants ask thee concerning me, surely I am nigh. I answer the prayer of the supplicant when he calls on me. So they should hear my call and believe in me that they may walk in the right way. The answer of God always comes when we turn our faces towards him. Surely I have been turned to thee, O Allah, striving to be upright. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and turn, turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins, heal the land. God's love may at first appear to be unconditional but at a certain point hello there's something required of the people God not going to continue to love us in our madness in our wickedness in our deviation in our rebellion this is what Sister Donna was saying. We have to turn from our wicked ways, turn 
from the lifestyle that you already know God disapproves of. But without the turning, there can be no blessings from heaven. Without the turning, there can be no response from God and heaven. The people have to turn towards him. His unconditional love is manifested in a man that he raises up from the people to stimulate in the people the desire to change and to help them to make the turn. But after a while, if the people don't turn, then they die where they are. Y'all all right? In order for the nation to survive and be firmly established, it must depend on Allah. And Allah alone. Prophets come and they go. Messengers have come and they have passed from among us. Leaders have been born from the people as guides and great teachers have imparted knowledge and wisdom that allow for the people to grow. But in the end, Allah remains. He is the ever-living, the ever-lasting, the self-subsisting one on whom we all depend. Qul hu Allah hu ahad. Allah hu samad. Lam yelet, wa lam yulet, wa lam yekulahu kufuan ahad. Say, he, Allah, is one. Allah is he on whom we all depend. He begets not, nor is he begotten. And there is none like him. There is always an I that produce a we. And as long as the we remain true to the I, then there is nothing that can stop the we from accomplishing what they will. Up, you mighty nation, you can accomplish what? What you will. So Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will bear so it will be even more fruitful he says you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. That's the key to our success as a nation. If we remain in him, him who? Him Elijah Muhammad, him Louis Farrakhan, him, Master Farad Muhammad, this is the power of the one regenerated in three. You say, well, we don't believe in the Trinity. Well, well, you can't put three into one, but you can put one in three. So Allah appeared in the person of Master Farad Muhammad and then he reproduced himself in Elijah Muhammad and Elijah Muhammad reproduced himself in Louis Farrakhan. Talk to me. Now, As Paul said, creation, oof, eagerly, 
eagerly awaits the sons of God to be revealed. It takes one son to become a man and to become a God. And then be about the business of reproducing himself. You are the sons of God. The daughters of God. And the world awaits for the sons and daughters to be revealed. That they will step up now to the plate. And bring in the kingdom of God on earth. But remember that Jesus talking, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And he comes back, I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Wow. See? Jesus goes on and says, if anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. Oh, that's beautiful. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as have I obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. And because Donna lifted that spirit and that scripture, see, I leave you with a new command. Because now, after learning the first commandment, the second commandment, now we have to have the example of love, the personification of love. And it is that love that will secure the nation. It is that love that will allow the nation to survive. It is that love that will secure 46 million black people. It is that love that will protect us against our enemies and if we love we love because he first loved us Jesus was the powerful one in the midst of the people and it is his love that allows for a nation to become established his personal relationship with the father See, the Father is unseen, absent yet present. Jesus does not represent a dead Christ. Jesus 
is the Messiah to the world that is guided by the Christ who is in that most exalted place. But he's making himself known through an obedient servant. The truth, it is this love, the awesome power of love that will allow us to do great works, secure us, protect us. A nation cannot grow and become firmly established on the earth until the soldiers of that nation become so infused with the idea of a nation and embodied with the principles of truth, freedom, and justice that they want nothing more than to be separate, free, and independent. So leaders come and leaders go, but the idea of a nation shall forever remain in the hearts and minds of the soldiers and the people. And that's why you have monuments that show the soldiers lifting up the flag of their nation. Because once you are so committed to the idea of being free, you may in a moment be disheartened and your heart may fall if you see a leader here or a leader there go down on the battlefield. But because you have bought into the idea of being free, you pick up that flag and onward march soldiers until victory is won. See? Time is it? Now that's a price to pay for your freedom. We can't continue in the condition that we are in. We have yet to pay the price that other nations on this earth have paid for their sovereignty. Talk to me. The enemy tortured us, killed us for their own purpose. But what have we sacrificed to fulfill the purpose of our existence? Talk to me. That's why Moses and Aaron are leading the children of Israel out of Egypt to a land that God promised them, but they had to go through a Red Sea. You can't get to freedom without, without the willingness to pay a price. Ain't no Red Sea over there. The Red Sea, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, represents war, bloodshed, Revolution. Life doesn't come into the world without, the, without blood flowing. Talk to me. The head forges the way for the body. God first makes a leader, but the body has to follow the head to its freedom. And if the body is not willing to follow the head, then it cannot get across. It cannot get through. And that's why I think I said it last Sunday. Almighty God, Allah has given to us our Moses and Aaron in the honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. At what point will our prayer, our sacrifice, our life, and our death really mean something? See, 
My prayer, my sacrifice, my life, my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. No associate has he, for this am I commanded. I am of those who submit. What has Allah commanded us to do? And have we submitted to his command? Now, I just quote it to us from the words of Jesus from the Bible, from the New Testament, from the book of John, that it is the Father's desire that we bear much fruit, showing ourselves to be his disciples. What more could we ask of Allah than what he has already done for us? The question is, do we want to be free? Do we want a future for ourselves? It is, is it our desire for this world greater than what God has promised? The Quran says, do you love this world's life more than the hereafter? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad in his monumental speech delivered in Washington, D.C., May the 29th, 1959 from the Uline Arena, in this historic speech, he said, quote, My people, I am here to fulfill a promise made long ago. I am here to bring you the truth. I am here with a solution to the problems of the so-called Negroes and his white slave masters. You are seeking something. You are seeking an answer to your 400-year-old problem of slavery, servitude, and fifth-class citizenship. I am here. See, there's your I am. I am here with the solution to that problem. Ain't no Negro come before black folk speaking with such confidence than what you have heard from the mouth of Elijah Muhammad. Talk to me. No leader has come before us to offer his life if what he is directing us to or what he is saying is false. Why wouldn't you want to get behind a leader like that? You want the leaders that your enemy validates and approves for you. But you don't want the leader that God raises up for you. Then a people like that deserve to die with the enemy. Because you're too cowardly. You're too punctified to claim what God wants for you. God want to give it all to us. He takes the kingdom from whom he pleases, and he gives it to another. You Muslims, Malcolm, Elijah, Farrakhan, and you, Muhammad, you stir up the emotions of the enemy, and we don't want to disturb the master. What is wrong with you? In 2013, you still want to be a good old nigger boy and a nigger girl and a slave for the enemy? <laughs> Elijah Muhammad said, I am here with the solution. For more than 400 years, you have been pleading for justice, freedom, equality, a decent place in the sun, have rever reverberated like thunderclaps sounding in the dark valleys of Lebanon. Yet, there has been no answer. Never in the history of human evil have so many asked for just a penance so loud, so long, and received in return so little, if anything at all. He goes on. 
The church has failed you. Christianity has failed you. And the government of America has failed you. You have not received justice from any quarter. As prophesied, you, my fellow black men, are as sheep among wolves. And as it is to be expected, every wolf is taking a bite at you. You approach the Senate, the House, the White House, and you ask for justice, you get injustice. All our prayers have come to naught because we have proceeded out of ignorance. We have not known the true God. We have not known who, our brother, who are our brothers. We have not known who are our enemies. We have not known who is God, nor have we known who is the devil. In a nutshell, we have not known the truth about God, the devil, and until that truth is made plain to us, our prayers for justice will forever go unanswered. For the last 42 weeks, Farrakhan has made it so clear to us who God is and who the devil is, who Satan is. He has exposed the liar and the lies. No excuse for us. 40 days have been accomplished and it's time for a new generation to go in to the land that God has promised. Since the old generation was so fearful and so cowardly, God had to let them wander in the wilderness. A journey that could have taken 40 days took 40 years. Because we wanted to be with Massa. And that's why you don't have control of your children today. Because God has taken from your womb a generation that will be unafraid to go into the land that he has promised. See, what did the father say? Here we go. You approach the Senate, the House, the White House, and you ask for justice, you get injustice. All our prayers have come to naught because we have proceeded out of ignorance. All our prayers have come to nothing because we have proceeded out of ignorance and we don't know the true God. And in a nutshell, we have not known the truth about God, the devil, and until that truth is made plain to us, our prayers for justice will forever go unanswered. We will be the subject of scorn and laughter. By now, it should be ever clear that politics will no more solve our problem than it did the difficulties facing Israel during her bondage in Egypt. We have come to the brink of extinction. This is 1959. 53 years ago. We have come to the brink of extinction. We must now and here make an agonizing reappraisal of our way of life if we care anything for ourselves, our lives, our people, our race, the future of our properties, wives, and children. And these words that Elijah Muhammad spoke 53 years ago are for us today. And as we gathered in Tuskegee last Sunday, we have to make a reappraisal of our way of life if we care anything for ourselves, our lives, our people, our race, our future, the future of our wives and children. Muhammad's economic blueprint is for our survival. And we, the members of the Nation of Islam, who know this, have a duty to our people and a duty to our children if we want a future for them. If any man 
is to follow the Christ. There's a price that all of us have to pay. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said in his economic blueprint, he said, I have set before you a program according to the divine supreme being and his prophet, prophets. You have neither produced a better program nor anything equal to it. That's a fact. You don't hear no black leaders out here stopping the reckless and foolish spending of our people. Talk to me. They're not encouraging us to go out and secure land for our people, which is the basis of wealth creation. Talk to me. That's how you know that you have a true leader from God in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And that's why the minister had us to focus so much on the principles and work of Booker T. Washington. We want to show Tuskegee, show the black community, show, uh, show, pardon me, Mayor Johnny Ford, what we can do and accomplish if we're willing to go to work and make the necessary sacrifice to produce something of benefit for our families, our community, and it will be a benefit to others. We wanted to say last Sunday to the mayor, as he's fighting the enemy down there in Alabama to reopen the casino that was shut down by the state. And some of the residents of Tuskegee lost their jobs, but the minister sent this message to the mayor. The Holy Quran says, gambling is a device of the devil that produces division. The closing of the casino is a blessing. God allowed it because he didn't want you to have it to begin with. The mayor said, Minister, the people voted for this. We're trying to protect their rights. The minister said, the people vote for what is put in front of them. So why don't we put Muhammad's economic blueprint in front of Tuskegee and all of the cities across this country and let the people vote for Muhammad's economic blueprint to end poverty and want? Vote for land. There are 5,000 acres of land there in Tuskegee. Why did we lift Booker T. Washington for you, Mayor Ford? Black mayors all over Alabama? Our people suffering all over this country? If Booker T. Washington could build a kiln and bake clay land and turn it into bricks to build his school and to build uh, 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 benches and to build chairs and tables. If Booker T. Washington could sacrifice, you heard me last Sunday, his last dollar. And that shows you that when you are committed and you believe in what God has given to you, you give it your last, you give it your all. And that's when God blesses you, when you give it your all. Elijah Muhammad met Master Farad Muhammad in Detroit. He went to the temple as they were called in those days. And he gave this last coin or two coins. I can't remember the exact amount. But he gave what was in his pocket because he believed in the message and the cause. Do you know how this nation got rebuilt? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan didn't have no money. 
But he loved his father so much that he mortgaged his home. See, this is what I'm talking about. Sacrifice. What are you and I willing to do for our freedom? And so Booker T. Washington made bricks and he put everybody to work. Y'all all right? With a brick. A brick. You don't even attach any value to a brick. You look at a brick, and if you tell your children, do you know you can make a lot of money with bricks? They look at you like you crazy. But Booker T. Washington put all the young people to work. Is that right? He started an industry. Huh? His, the young people went across the state. Look at that beautiful black man that God gave to us. Huh? And from that same land and from where we were last Sunday, George Washington Carver developed over 100 products from a peanut from the land and other discoveries from the sweet potato and the soybean. See, this is from God's creation. So you mean to tell me that what's around Tuskegee, the land that is there, that we can't bring forth a product from the land that is already there and put our people to work for the benefit of themselves, their families, and the community? There has to be a vision put before our people that is greater than what is put in front of them. The minister wanted me to give last Sunday the example of the Mennonites in, in Belize when he visited Belize in March of this year with the delegation. He visited the Mennonite Christian community there. They migrated, I believe, from Germany, Europe, and they own over 100,000 acres of land. They migrated from southern Mexico into Belize and started with 20 acres of land. And the minister asked them, what is your degree in education? And he said they kind of smiled and said they go as far as the eighth grade. But they're feeding half of the population of Belize. But they know how to farm. And with a smile, they told the minister, we know how to count money. And we are quite wealthy because everyone needs to eat. Huh? Land is a prime requisite for freedom and wealth. Practically everything that you see, use, and consume comes from the land, from the earth, not from the air. It doesn't come from heaven somewhere up there. Everything that we need to survive comes from the land. How much producing land is used every day by the total population of the planet Earth? And the answer is 29 million square miles. And of course, there's much that we get from the lakes and the rivers and the oceans to sustain ourselves. But we have to get some land. You don't realize how much money is just made from Timberland the timberland, and even though environmentalists are asking for these uh, big uh, timber companies not to cut down the forest because it um, disturbs the ecology of our planet, but wood for building, wood for tables, wood for your homes, Billions and billions of dollars in wood and lumber. Have you 
Realize how much money there is just in metals? If you tell your son, you know, you should consider opening up a machine shop and get some sheet metal and make screws, bolts, nuts, hello somebody, nails, washers. he look at you and be like, oh, please. You try to count all the screws that are in your home. There's hardly nothing made that doesn't have a nail or a screw. It fastens and bonds things together. Screws, bolts, nails. Huh? How much money are we spending recklessly? Now, the U.S. black population, is, according to the census, is 43 million. Some say 46 million. Are you all seeing it? Okay. Now, did you look at that stat? We are larger than 163 of the 195 countries in the world. So when Elijah Muhammad said, we are a nation within a nation, there are only 33 countries on our planet that's larger than the population of blacks in the U.S including Argentina, Poland, Canada, and Australia. In, it, according to Nielsen's report, the state of the African-American consumer report, African-Americans, black economy or buying power is estimated to reach 1.1 trillion by 20. 15, and they still remain at the forefront when it comes to social trends and media consumption. Now, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I quoted from him last Sunday, he said, we have to stop this. Oh, boy. Oh, y'all sure know how to do this. This reckless uh, spending of our people. Do you, how much do we spend in getting tipsy every year? Three point, I mean three billion dollars just in alcohol. Bring up the next slide. Let's go through it quickly. These are all our vices, habits that are killing us. And we're paying to die. Now you know that's a... That's a real foolish people. I, I want to go to the grave. And we keep paying to die. And then you pay to die, but you ain't got no money to get buried. And you, we in bad shape. Can't even get a casket to put Pookie in. It's true. $3.3 billion in tobacco products. Put the other vice up. $3.1 billion in entertainment and leisure. See, we're already at nearly $10 billion. You gonna tell me that we can't support Muhammad's economic program to end poverty and want with a nickel a day, 35 cents a week, $18? and 20 cents a year? That's why the minister said it would be painless. And he, uh, on Sunday, gave us the figure from 16 million wage earners. If they gave a nickel a day, $18 and 20 cents in a year, that would give us, in a national savings treasury, $291,200,000. But if 46 million of us did it, that means your baby, yes, every member of the black 
nation sacrificing on Nicola Day, it would give us $891 million in one year. Now that's just a fraction of what we're throwing away in foolishness. Bring up the next one real quick. Oh, a fat nation eating all day long. I'm just showing you the misery index of our condition so that you don't have no excuse not to support this program with a nickel a day and we killing ourselves every day. All we got to do is just stop eating one meal of the three and four that we eat every day. Just, just stop snacking. You do your body good. Keep going. Check this out. According to one report, state lotteries hit the poor the hardest. Simply put, lotteries take the most from those who can least afford it, wrote economist Richard Wolff. Instead of taking those most able to pay, in parentheses, the principal of federal income tax in the U.S., state leaders are, are using lotteries to disguise a regressive tax that falls on the middle and even more on the poor. A 2010 study found that households with take home incomes of less than 13,000 spent on average, y'all ready for this? $645 a year on lottery tickets which is about 9% of their income. The reason people play lotteries varies, but it mixes hopes and dreams with desperation. Poorer people see it as a slim chance to radically improve their standard of living. See? But does your condition improve? No. So why don't you invest in a program that will bring you wealth and riches and everything that you need and want for yourself? Put that other slide back up. One study put the figure at $998 a year for African Americans. And guess what? Whites, $210. Don't tell me that we cannot pull our resources in a collective manner and put something in a national treasury that will allow us in a short amount of time to improve our condition. The messenger of God is only responsible for giving a clear delivery of the message. Once he delivers it, it's on you, it's on me, it's on us. So if we feel the hurt and the pain of our suffering people as those who have been called out of darkness into light, and we know the truth and the program of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, then what is expected of us but to get up and go and promote this program to our people and sign our people up by the hundreds and the thousands. Every one of us have an average of 100 contacts in our electronic devices, our smartphones, right? Well, get to work. Get to work and promote Muhammad's economic blueprint because our future is at stake. Yours, Muslim. Me, Muslim. Let's bring up the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to close us out. What must be done? Yes, sir. 
We have God with us. We have Him as our guide. Yes, sir. We don't have to stand around here and ask the question, what must be done? Yes, sir. Get up and let's go and do something. Yes, sir. with whatever the white folks will let us have. Yes, sir. We're trying to do something with it to make them feel that they didn't give it over to a, a bunch of lazy fellows <laughs> that want to sit down and turn our face back to them begging them yes, to carry us right on. When you have been given a chance to go for self, go for self. Yes, sir. <laughs> I say that the black man of North America has nobody to blame but himself. If he respect himself and do for himself, his once slave master will come and respect him and help him to do something for self. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. You cannot say that they don't help you to do something for self. They're helping us mm -hmm. to That's go right. for ourselves. Right. <laughs> Who would want to help an old horse that don't want to do anything but lay down in the lot? Right. Really disgusting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Rouse him up and tell him to get up. Yes, sir. You can't pull the track to pull the plow. Yes, sir. I don't believe in us. Now, in this modern time, laying down on the white man looking for him, to give us something to go for. He give you something when he give you freedom. Mm -hmm. That's all you wanted. Right. To be free to do something for self. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, you got that. Don't now lay down around his doorstep asking him to help you. Go help yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, that's right. He takes the shackles off from you and say, now you're free. Go for yourself. Why should you still lay there to his gate? Ah, oh, give me, give me, give you nothing. After he let you go, free to get for yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't need to blame him now. <laughs> blame yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The earth is lost. Yes, sir. And that there's enough of for you to have some and for them to have some. God wants to continue to help them to live on this earth. You get that part that he gives you. And don't be worried over here. That's right. Take that which God gives you, and that's that on. 
go to war with no man but that of his own. <laughs> no, you don't fight nobody over what is there. <laughs> Just get yours yes, and keep yours. Yes, sir. And let him keep his. Yes, sir. If God give it to him, that's him and God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God just give me something. Yes, sir. Now God have given you something. Yes, sir. Let us do the best we can with what he has given to us. Yes, sir. Take somebody's profit. Take nothing. Just take that which God has given to you and make something out of it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You take nothing. You go to war with no man. Mm-hmm. No. Nope. No, you go to war with yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Trying to rob people out of their own, that's wrong. Yes, sir. The earth is too large. Yes, sir. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. All praise is due to Allah for the perfect guidance that he has given to us through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his beloved servant, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It's time, pardon me, for us to go to work. God is with us if we are willing to get up and go for self. There is no power in the heavens or in the earth that can stop a people who determine to be free. So let us Get up now with this economic blueprint and let's support it and let us join our people up on this program by the tens and the thousands and the millions for our future depends on what the black man is going to do for himself. Thank you for listening. Thank you for coming. I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Please log on again next week and every week this year for the time and what must be done. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Log on to NOI.org every Saturday, 6 p.m. Central Time for truth, guidance, and unequaled love from the National Representative of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Pass on the word every Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time at NOI.org. The time and what must be done. Remember, to have Minister Farrakhan answer your questions, tweet them to at Louis Farrakhan, hashtag Ask Farrakhan. And to add this message to your library or as a gift for someone you love, go to store.finalcall.com.